So how's training going for the fight next Saturday? Yeah, really well. I've, uh, I've had eight to ten weeks with Jamie, so yeah, it's been really good. I've had good sparring. Ran a uh, couple of different gyms as well, and in our gym, so yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I mean, to me, you look a different fighter today than you did. I mean, I only saw you a couple of days before the last fight, but you look totally different and, and much more with it today. I mean, there seems to be a massive difference since the last fight. Yeah, I mean, there's a few, there's a few things why I weren't right on the night, but. As a fighting man, I'm going to get in there and do the best I could on the night, which weren't good enough last time, but it will be this time. And uh, I've been working on different things with Jamie. So I'm, all, I'm always going to do what I do, and that's come forward, but I'm also trying to get different things into my game when it's not working. Try to go back and hold the centre of the ring, not steam people, which I'm, I do naturally. So. That's what we've been working on in sparring. It's been hard at times, but that's uh, that's what we're aiming to do. And I know Diego Burton's going to be the hardest fight so far, but I don't want to I don't want to be with people who are not not coming to fight because in my mind that makes it harder. So I want to fight people who want to fight, come to fight, which that that's going to happen with Diego Burton. So I'm looking forward to it. So Jamie, you've recently started uh, taking over Joe's training. What yeah. differences have you have you made to him? Um, I think with Joe, we're just, just trying to uh, take his chin gun, right? Just <laughs> just trying to make him feel that he hasn't got to be a wrecking ball all the time. I mean, like everyone knows Joe's strengths. He's strong. He's got a great chin, and he can come forward. But that don't always win your boxing matches. So I think he neglects. Um, boxing sometimes and it may be too hard to teach him but we are seeing improvements in the gym like he's using his jab more and uh, just trying to create a bit of space for his punches instead of just all out and out of pressure um, and it seems to have worked but the, the proof's going to be obviously at fight time when the bell goes if he can uh, sort of try and try and do a few things that we've done but I always think fighters revert to type and you ain't going to change in that much but um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing a few subtle changes yeah. And who have you been sparring in preparation for this? Uh, start a camp sparring uh, John Ryder, who obviously, in my opinion, is a top level fighter, uh, but he's obviously a southpaw, so in the middle of the camp that stopped. But uh, yeah, I've been sparring uh, a German who's been over here sparring. I've been sparring uh, the last three weeks and sparring two or three amateur boys. They've been getting in and doing, the t doing eight and ten rounds with me, but splitting the sparring. So I've always had fresh sparring partners. I had uh, three spine partners the other day, and I've obviously done the 10, so I'm feeling good for it, I'm ready for it. And what sort of test do you think Diego Burton brings uh, next week? I think Diego's a really good fighter. I, mean, I see him that, I was uh, I was at the fight when he fought Lee Markham a while back, and I've seen the Elliot Matthews fight recently, and uh, I think Diego brings um, a set of problems. He's fit and he comes to fight. He got lucky in the Matthews fight. Um, He's got, he's got a good chin apart from obviously Markham, but I mean we've sparred Markham a lot and we know the sort of power, power he carries. Um, but I think he can out, at times, if Joe can revert back to his old stuff, he could outwork him at times. But we, we've got a game plan that we've worked on and uh, we, we're confident we're, we're going to put on a good performance. But yeah, Diego Byrne is a live threat, he, he really is. I want to win this British Masters, that mean a lot to me. And uh, I want to defend it. And then, yeah, I'd. I'd my aim is to be Southern Area Champion by the end of the year. Obviously, with my team, as well, with Jamie, with obviously you as my promoter, I want to I wanna be Southern Area Champion, but it'll mean a lot to me to win this British Masters first.
Yeah, well, I think a lot of times, I think the big thing about boxers is what happens when you have a setback. And last time was a setback, but it seems that you've really dusted yourself down and, and moved on with it because it is hard, you know, it's hard when you get a setback. A lot of people don't come back from it, do they? No, I mean, I, if I would have got knocked out or put down bad, it would affect my confidence. But I didn't get hurt once in the fight and I lost by a point. So it was just things affect outside of the ring affected me in that fight but not taking nothing away from the, the fellow I fought he was he got the decision but the biggest thing is, in my opinion is I've learnt from it so I'm a better fighter already so I'll put it right when I fight Diego Burton and then go on from there otherwise I would have been doing the same thing you know, I mean, the biggest issue about the last fight and the reason that you got the, the, the points awarded against you was the thing was that they were saying that you got there and you were forcing, but you weren't throwing enough. Yeah. And that's, would you put that down to the fact, I mean, you were, you know, not a lot of people know, but you were ill before the fight, really. And perhaps on hindsight, if you took the clock back, you wouldn't have took the fight. Did it have an effect on you in the fight? Did you feel unable to throw as much as usual? Yeah, I mean, I was, it was the first 10 rounder I'd done as well. And obviously I weren't well before the fight. So I was holding back to make sure I got through the 10 as well, where I'd fought. I, I sort of was holding back during the rounds, but where a lot of people step off people to rest, I step onto people, smother, and that is where I'm resting. So when I was in there, I was throwing, but then resting, but obviously to, a, to the referee it looked like I was just smothering my work, things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to make excuses why I lost. A loss is a loss, no matter, it's on paper and it's on my record, so it doesn't really matter. But I know... It didn't affect my confidence at all, because I know what it did. Plenty of the best have lost early on in their careers, I mean, if you look back at it, even people like Manny Pacquiao and I mean, Johnny Nelson was a world champion, I think he lost his first seven fights or something yeah. ridiculous like so, that, so it doesn't really matter, but it's how you come back from it that matters, isn't it? And yeah, and as long as you've got the right people around you, yeah. and the right team around you, but we all know, box it, you can get in the ring and fight to the death, but you need good people around you, and I'm lucky I've got that, so... I'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to go forwards. I've worked hard. I've trained hard. And if Diego Burton was to win, I'd hold my hands up and go and say I've trained hard. But he ain't. Good luck, Nick. Certainly, Joe. Cheers. I'm, I'm hoping. I mean, Joe's always said uh, he, he's aiming for a British title in, in boxing when he first comes to us. And I believe, and, he, and we both believe that he can get there. Um, I think it's an important fight, and, and maybe if it makes him, I don't know if it makes him mandatory at Southern or something like that, it's further on down the line, but I think it's a big fight for him, and, and I believe after this he could go for Southern or perhaps a defence of this British Masters, but we're not overlooking Diego at all, because I know after his last fight, he was unlucky, and I actually see him at uh, your call. And he'll be up for this fight. He's straight back into camp, obviously. And uh, he, he didn't have any injuries in that fight. So we're not overlooking um, Diego at all. And uh, But obviously, eventually, we're looking forward to Southern area, English, and, and possibly the British, because that's where Joe, that's where his dream lies. And I met Joe, of course, six, six or seven years ago, and I remember him talking like that. For, he was still an amateur. So you've got to chase your dreams, and you've got to have dreams, I suppose. I mean, a lot's been made in some quarters about Joe fighting at uh, this catch weight 11 stone 10. I mean, what do you make of the weight and the weight you expect Joe to fight at when he fights for even bigger titles? Uh, uh, Joe will make middleweight uh, 11 6 for a title um, if needs be, but um, Joe, he, he come to me uh, well before when Joe was with his former trainer, um, Jason Rowland, um, th th there was sort of rumours that I've got another fighter, Christian like middle that maybe they might fight and maybe they might fight. And we was always uh, we're in our camp when Joe wasn't part of our camp under the thing that if Joe ever made like middle, I think he'd be weak after six rounds. And I think everyone knows Joe, if ever he wins that big defining fight, it will be a 10 round, 12 round war. And I think to make like middle and make him weaker, I think 11-10 he feels comfortable at. He's got a great strength and conditioning coach, Mike Cooper, who leaves no stone unturned and they're quite confident that all the training camp he's not going to be like lacking carbs and he's had a good camp because he's not been worried about cutting weight and he seems he's told me that you're going to see a difference on the night compared to the last fight due to the fact of trying to cut weight. So um, I believe he's an 11-6 fighter. He's, he, he's not. He's a puncher. He's not a massive puncher. He's an 11-6 fighter. But um, Mike seems to know his stuff. I can't question Mike on on the fitness and, and the nutritional side. Um, and they seem to think he's going to be a different kind of fighter, 11-10. So 
we'll have to wait and see on the night. So it's all going to be revealed next Saturday night? All will be revealed, yeah. I mean, we've had a good camp and it, I think sparring um, at a higher weight, like throughout the camp, you don't want to be sparring near a fight, near your fight weight and draining down because it's not going to do any good. So I think he's been around like the 12-2 all the way through the camp. Like, we're, not gonna, we're not really heavy and, and, and we're going to do like the cut at the end, but he's been sparring at a strong weight and he'll probably be sparring at the weight he'd probably come in at on the night. Which is which is round about the right way. So I like when before I've done it with other fighters, I had another fight, Mike Evans, and he's trying to keep his fight weight four four weeks out before the fight. And you're not getting the good spars. You're going into spars dead after two rounds because you've not had no carbs and there's loads of different ways of making weight. But Joe's assured me he feels confident and he's had a good camp. That's that's all, all we can say. Look forward to next. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I really am. Okay. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Jamie, thanks a lot.